That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we go to Jerry Nadler. Now, Jerry Nadler had a internet journalist, basically, somebody that is, is known for doing uh, interviews on the web, and, and this is directly from his Twitter. Jerry Nadler had some interesting comments to make about Antifa. Watch. It is true. There's violence across the whole country. Do you disavow the violence from Antifa? That's happening in Portland right now. There's that, riots. That, that, that's a myth that's being spread only in Washington D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. Sir, there's there's Boston videos everywhere Jersey. online. There's fires and riots. There's th they're throwing fireworks at uh, federal officers. DHS is there. Look online. It gets crazy, Mr. Nadler. <laughs> I mean, Jerry Nadler living in his own little fantasy world, asserting that Antifa is a myth somehow. Now, um, to give Nadler as much grace as humanly possible, sometimes it's not a wise idea to just because people from the other side of the aisle, whether it's, you know, media or other people, you know, political opponents, people that have something to gain from it, when they say something, there's a good reason not to automatically assume that it is correct. But at this point, saying that Antifa and the violence in Portland is a myth? I mean, has this guy just been watching absolutely no news for the past, I don't know, three weeks? Granted, in Seattle, they did, you know, have the autonomous zone where they just took over a giant block of the city. But Portland, really since then and even a little bit before has been involved in these kinds of crazy protests. And what's nuts is a whole lot of people now are trying to make the case that, well, the protesters are, are there trying to protest the occupation of their city and they don't like the federal agents being there. Full disclosure, I'm pretty hesitant about that as well. I mean, being somebody that is a, a very libertarian-leaning, who doesn't like the federal government, I mean, I'm, I'm not only libertarian-leaning, I'm also a federalist, and I don't like the idea of federal agents showing up to enforce local laws. That's not something that I am fond of. I don't think that this is the right way to handle it. But regardless of where you stand on that issue, you can't say that there's no violence. The reason that those federal agents are there is because there was violence to begin with. Let's talk about cause and effect here. It's not as though the federal agent showed up and then all of a sudden protests started, and the protests started getting violent. No, the protests were already violent, which is the reason the federal agents showed up. Now, you can say that that's not the right approach to it, and frankly, I kind of agree with you. I don't think that that was the right way to handle it. However, whether I agree with it or not, I acknowledge that it was not the protesters that are some kind of victim here, that they were just doing nothing wrong and there was no violence happening, and then all of a sudden the federal agent showed up and, okay, now we've got to get violent. Now, even if that were the story, still doesn't excuse the violence. But that's the narrative that the left is running with. But Nadler's just saying the whole thing's a hoax. Whole thing's just a myth. You just imagine the whole thing. It's not really happening. But like the journalist there in that video points out, yeah, it kind of is, and it's not just an isolated incident here or there. There's like hours and hours of footage of people throwing fireworks at cops, setting fires to build. You know what? I don't even have to describe it. We'll just watch. What was a largely peaceful protest has escalated into violence. The main battle line is here outside the federal courthouse. Protesters unable to pull down the new fence throw fireworks over. Tear gas is fired back. Many here are prepared for this. But as federal agents emerge in their dozens, those in gas masks run too. Rubber bullets fired into the darkness. It's quite frightening. Don't worry, it's all imagination. None of it's real. Ow. Uh -oh.
Well, that punch would have really hurt if it really happened. Good thing it's all just a hit. Some protesters have been violent, but there's been peaceful pushback too, like this woman wearing nothing but a mask and a hat, confronting heavily armed agents. Apparently that's a mystery. Now they're attacking someone in a wheelchair. Do you think this violence is undermining your cause? You know what? I don't, I don't believe in violence at all, but unfortunately, you know, you got to make noise, right? I haven't seen anyone get hurt or killed here, right? I see some fireworks. I see some people making a lot of, like, rackets. You're going to me off. Oh, he's drinking. Don't worry, it's all he's drinking. What are you so saying, worried. bro? You want to get no. oh, What's up, bro? Oh, oh, that's legal. Oh, Well, now that last clip is by far the worst one. You can see there, like, I'm pretty sure that that guy that just got kicked in the head, and I don't even know if that dude's still alive anymore. I mean, he was not moving, and then after already not moving and had his head hit the pavement, that guy kicks him in the face. Like, I don't know if he's still breathing at this point. Um, I'd have to look that up, but I imagine that he is not very comforted by Jerry Nadler's assertion that it's all a myth. It's it's only being spread in Washington, D.C. There's nothing to it. It's all just an elaborate conservative hoax. It's the, uh, as the Clintons made famous, you know, the, the vast right-wing conspiracy. Yet yeah, none of that's happening. It's all in your head. Don't worry about it. Nothing to see here. Move along. I don't know what kind of cocaine Jerry Nadler is on, but evidently it's some darn good stuff because... If you can look at that and go, ah, oh, it's all a myth, it's a hoax, don't worry about it. This is a crazy person. Either that or he's he hasn't turned on the news in two weeks or three weeks. Well, again, this, this violence has been going on for weeks now. But all of this has been happening. Somehow it's all just a, a construction, an imaginary thing that has been put together by a bunch of evil, evil conservatives that just want to make the case that there's violent protests going out there to justify Donald Trump sending in federal troops. I'm not trying to justify Donald Trump sending in federal troops. Now, granted, I understand the instinct that President Trump is looking at this and going, yeah, we got to do something. I mean, we've got American citizens being attacked in the streets and nothing happening to them, yet we've got to do something about that. Like, I, I understand the instinct. Don't get me wrong. I understand the intention. I think the intention is good. I don't think that Donald Trump's trying to, you know, take over the city or anything like that. I, I don't believe that for an instant, which is the way that this is usually being cast by the left. But I do believe the violence is happening. Like, I do think it's actually there, Unlike Jerry Nadler, who seems to think that this is just some kind of crazy fever dream that has been put together by the right to be able to justify something. I'm not trying to justify what Trump's doing at all. I don't think that's the right way to handle it. I think that even if you were going to send in federal troops, I don't like the sort of cloak and dagger stuff where they're just going in and picking up people that are breaking laws and bringing them back to a, the, the federal courthouse there. But the idea that this is all in people's heads and there aren't, you know, violent protesters... You saw one in the, the clip there actually saying that the violence is justified and, well, we've got to make some noise. This is insane. We're living in a fantasy world where the left is telling us that we can't trust our own eyes and, and things that we have hours and hours of video footage that we can watch and see all of it happening. Not real. Sherry Nadler's level of denial is just absolutely astounding. I can understand initial skepticism of it. And considering that we have whole news networks dedicated to selling you confirmation bias, if you've just been watching MSNBC or CNN, maybe I could kind of see why you don't think that there is anything going on, because they're probably not showing you that content. 
But at this point, the mountain of evidence is overwhelming. Right now, Jerry Nadler saying that this whole thing is a myth? I mean, at least Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic in Harry Potter, at the end of uh, Order of the Phoenix, once he saw <laughs> Voldemort actually attacking people in the Ministry of Magic, he had to go, okay, I guess he's back. Like, at a certain point, you have to... <laughs> You have to let go of the denial, but even Minister Fudge, I know Minister Fudge sounds like a, a candy of some kind, uh, but even Minister Fudge, like when confronted with that, had to go, okay, it's it's not a myth. Voldemort really has been resurrected. Jerry Nadler seems to be perfectly content with, with having that surrounding him and being like, nope, I don't care how much evidence there is for it. It's all just a myth. It's only being spread in D.C., like, the, the spread in D.C. line is weird, too, because if it is some kind of vast conspiracy, wouldn't you think it's being spread in places other than D.C.? But, uh, well, I mean, you can see why Jerry Nadler is definitely the, the source of the Daily Dose of Stupid for today. But I want you to imagine this. I'll leave this as sort of the, the parting thought here. Can you imagine how the media and the left would have reacted if, after Charlottesville... President Trump had said, oh, the, the idea that there were Nazis down there or white supremacists down there, that's just a myth. Remember that they got angry for him trying to make a point about there being some good people down there, not talking about the Nazis, talking about people that were there to protest the statues being taken down. And they were mad that he didn't, de he didn't denounce the alt-right fast enough, which, by the way, that was a fair criticism. That was one that I particularly said that he was wrong on to wait two or three days before denouncing it. That was a bad move by President Trump, and he should not have done it. However, we've got Jerry Nadler. If you were to switch the roles, we don't even have to imagine a what-if scenario. We have a one-to-one -one comparison here. Jerry Nadler not only saying that, uh, that he's not going to condemn the violence in, in Portland, he's saying it's not even real, it's not even happening. Can you imagine... What would have happened if President Trump, especially considering that there was a person that actually died in that, that he had just been like, oh no, it's, it's, it's all a myth, it's fake news. They would have had a field day with that, and should have. But when Jerry Nadler says it, everybody just kind of pretends like it doesn't happen. The only thing higher than Jerry Nadler's ridiculous level of absolute denial that he's living in is his waistline. <laughs> the guy's... Did you see the guy's tie in that clip? Like, his, his tie reaches below his zipper. No, not a good thing. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.